Hello and welcome to part 3 of this series for Kerbal Space Program 2 for Science. So in the last video we did our first orbital rocket and in this video we're actually going to go to the moon and come back to Kerbin. Uh, now we're not going to be landing on the moon because we don't quite have enough technology for that yet. Um, however, speaking of technology, we do need to buy a couple of things to be able to get there and back safely. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to probes and we're going to research that because we want to get the solar panels and we're also going to go to specialised decoupling and research that because we want the separatron boosters as well. So now that's out of the way, we'll go straight to the vehicle assembly building and get building our Muna rocket. So now we're here, the first thing we'll do as usual is grab the tin can command pod. We'll then pop a Mark 16 parachute on the top and two Mark 12 uh, radial parachutes, uh, just like in the last video. And once again, I'm going to move the drugs in a little bit as well, just so they're not sticking out quite so much from the side. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to science and we're going to put the science junior on the bottom of this because we do have a mission where we need to do a survey with the science junior around Kerbin. Uh, also, we haven't done any science by, well, in high Kerbin orbit or in the Mooner sphere at all at the moment. So we'll pop that there. Next, we'll add the heat shield underneath that. And then we're going to pop a stack decoupler and move on to stage three. So for this stage, we're going to go for the FLT400 Methalox tank. And then for the engine, we're going to pop the Terrier on the bottom there. Then we'll add another coupler. And for the next stage, we're going to go for the FLT200 tank with another FLT400. And for the engine, we will use the trusted swivel engine. Then we will add another decoupler, and for the main stage, we're going to use the FLT200 and two FLT800s. And of course, we'll pop the swivel engine on the bottom of that as well. So we're also going to add some solid, uh, solid rocket boosters onto this as well. So for that, we first need to go to coupling and grab the TT38K radial decoupler and we will put four of them on the side of the core stage. Then if we go back to engines, we are gonna grab the Thumper solid fuel booster and we're gonna pop that onto the decouplers. And we also need some aerodynamics. So we'll go to aerodynamics, add the nose cone onto the top of the boosters and we'll also add some fins as well onto the core stage. Now I like to have my engines lined up at the bottom, so I'm also going to move the solid boosters down a bit. And then we also want to kick the top of the boosters away from the core stage, because otherwise there's a risk of them hitting the fins or the engine. So for that, we'll go back to engines, we'll grab the Separatron 1, and we're going to pop four of these on, well, two of these on each of the boosters, and they're going to be facing uh, in towards the core stage so we'll pop one there we'll pop one there and we'll make sure they're lined up properly so they're not quite properly lined up so i think this, this one needs to be adjusted yeah that should do it just that way it means it's not going to spin wildly and like i say we don't want it hitting any part of the rocket when we uh, jettison them and then the only other thing we really need to do is just to make sure we don't run out of energy we're going to add some solar panels onto the science junior and i'm also going to just move them in a touch as well and then we're also going to add some trusty old launch clamps so for that we go to structure as usual and we'll pop one of them on each of the four boosters so now, so it's not quite so high from the ground, I'm going to lower it down a bit and then we will also, as usual, we'll need to organise the staging stack. So for this, we want to put the four main boosters in the same stage as the launch clamps. Then we want to have the core stage engine in the same stage as the decouplers. And of course, we also want the separators in there as well. Then we'll just clean up the stack a little bit. 
And then, of course, we need the second stage engine in with the decoupler on the first stage, the third stage engine with the decoupler on the second stage. And just like in the last video, I'm also going to separate the parachutes. And then I'm going to create an action group so that we can cut the main, uh, sorry, cut the drogue parachutes at the same time as deploying the main parachutes. So we'll just set that up. There we go, that should be about right, although I've done that one wrong. There we go. So yeah, we want to cut the two Mark 12s and deploy the Mark 16 when we press 1 on our keyboards. Now, the last thing I'm going to do just before we actually launch is I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping on the launch pads because we are currently selected at launch pad 3 because launch pad 1 and 2 both still have the launch clamps from the last two rocket launches we did. So we'll recover them just to clean up the pads and then we are ready to launch. So now we're on the pad, we'll go through a pretty standard uh, launch. If you watch any of my videos, you'll realize I have a particular technique that I like to use. So we'll start off by activating the countdown. Then as usual, once we take off, we will hit the up button on the control wheel to lock the ship to the top of the nav ball. And then once that's done, we will roll the rocket so that the red north line is pointed towards the left of the nav ball and that just means that we'll be able to pitch down range at 90 degrees which is signified by the thick black line that's now pointed at the bottom of the nav ball and the other thing I always do is I always start pitching at 2500 meters so as usual we'll hit the SES stability off and then because this um, rocket doesn't have gimbalable engines in the solid fuel boosters we are just going to hold down W and once those have depleted we will jettison them and we can also keep holding down W when we go to the call stage so we're not going to go very far outside of the green prograde markup so any aerodynamic effects won't cause any issues and also we're entering the upper atmosphere now so air resistance is only minimal so as with any launch that we do, we are going to aim to get the white level indicator pointed at the thin 45 degree line in the centre of the top half of the nav ball that denotes the 45 degrees of pitch. And once we are there, we will just manage our adjustments until the rocket stabilises. And now that that's stabilised, we can actually do a little bit of science. So because we have the um, going green mission that means that we want to do a scan with the science junior so we're just going to click on the experiments button we won't actually get any science in the uh, research inventory but we will complete that mission um, so now that's done what we're going to do is we're going to keep an eye on our apoapsis as usual and once the apoapsis reaches 70 uh, sorry 85,000 meters then we will cut the throttle the general rule of thumb is as long as you're over 75, you should have plenty of room beneath um, your ship to be able to do any orbital manoeuvres. So we'll go to 85, then we'll go to the map screen and double click on Kerbin to focus on the planet. And then as usual, we'll zoom in and create a manoeuvre on the apoapsis, making sure it's relatively central. Then we'll look down and pull the prograde arrow out until our periapsis and apoapsis are roughly 90 degrees from each other. Or from the uh, 90 degrees from the manoeuvre node, sorry. And as you can see, once again, we would be going back into the atmosphere, so we will pull out on the radial out arrow, and that will bring the apoapsis down and the periapsis up. And because we only have a short amount of time to do this manoeuvre, I'm actually going to hit the point at manoeuvre button now to make sure that we have plenty of time to get there. But I'm also going to just do a little bit more adjustment of the actual manoeuvre. So I'll push the, uh, the retrograde arrow in slightly until the apoapsis and periapsis are at 90 degrees. And now we have a relatively circular orbit and we are pointed at the manoeuvre 
in time to start our burn. So as usual, once it hits zero, we'll go to full throttle. Now as you can see by the number two on the burn gauge, uh, we will need to stage two, stage two part way through this, so we'll keep our eye on our Delta V on the stage one. Um, but for some reason the burn gauge doesn't always work, I believe it's still a little bit bugged. So we'll use all of the other uh, aspects to actually work out how our burn is going. We've got the timer obviously, we've got our orbital info panel and of course the best one really is the blue line denoting our current trajectory. So as I say, once the stage has depleted we're going to go on to the next stage and now it's just a matter of waiting until the blue line matches up with the orange one. So as you can see the uh, orbit isn't actually going to match up properly with the projected orbit but that's not a problem as long as the apoapsis is in front of your ship and you, that's the first marker you're going to reach you shouldn't have any issues. We are going to move it to about 90 degrees from the manoeuvre though and then we'll delete the manoeuvre node and we can see our current apoapsis is 94 and our periapsis is 59 so we would still be going into back into the atmosphere if we didn't circularize our orbit, which we're going to do now. So once again, we'll zoom in, we'll create our maneuver, make sure it's nice and central. Like I say, it's always best to have it a little bit to the left as opposed to the right. Uh, and then one thing that I like to do when creating any uh, minor maneuver like this, you can just like, you know, finesse the arrow until the two get to 90 degrees. What I like to do is I like to just pull it out too far until the orange curb in apoapsis appears then if we right click on that one we'll lock the information in place and we are aiming for 94 kilometers so we're going to pull inwards again on the prograde arrow and once our apoapsis reaches 94 we will then be able to do the maneuver although as usual most maneuvers once the apoapsis and periapsis are at 90 degrees from the um, maneuver node then we should have a relatively circular orbit so how we're we doing here we've got a periapsis of 94 and an apoapsis of 94 as well so yeah that should do the trick so as usual we'll point at the maneuver And now it's there, we can warp to the maneuver and perform the burn. Although actually, before we do that, this burn is only a one second burn and it's 29 delta V, which can make it a little bit awkward for doing, um, getting it accurate. So one trick that I like to use is I like to go back onto the flight view, right click on the engine, and then reduce the throttle to around about 25%, or the thrust limiter should I say, to around about 25%. And now if we go back to the map and click on any part of the maneuver, you can now see that it's saying it would be a four second burn. So that just gives us a little bit more control um, over our burns and it means we can do finer adjustments easier without any real worries about overdoing it and uh, wasting fuel. So anyway, we'll warp to the maneuver and we'll perform the circularization burn. So there we are, that's our burn done. Uh, we are at 94 by 90. We could probably actually do a little bit more. So I'm going to keep pointed at retina prograde and then I'm going to increase the throttle again 
I'm going to keep going until we are at 90 degrees. So there we are, that should do. It can be very awkward to get them exactly perfect. So as long as they are within the same like kilometer, then generally you're all right when it comes to circularizing burns. So now we're here, we uh, do have a couple of things we can do. We will check the science to see if we can get anything. So we can't with that. However, we do have the um, going EVA mission. So what we'll do is we'll come back onto the flight view and we will click the EVA button on our Kerbal's portrait. And we don't need to let go, uh, we could just leave it like that. And we can go into and drop back in. Now we've got that mission done. So the next thing we need to do is we need to actually get to the moon. So for this one, we'll right click on the moon and set that as the target. And the first thing we want to do is we want to match our inclinations with that of the moon. Um, and the way that we can tell what our relative inclination is, is if you look, you now see we have the ascending node and the descending node. And that is saying that we're at a 0.4 degree relative inclination to the moon. So what we want to do is we want to get that down to 0.0 degrees. So for that, we will zoom into the next node on our orbit, which in this case happens to be the descending node. We will create our maneuver on that node. And then for this, we want to pull either the either of the purple arrows. Um, now, the way that I usually remember the best way to do this is if you are approaching the ascending node, then you would pull outwards on the anti-normal arrow. So AN equals anti-normal, uh, whereas descending node, you pull outwards on the um, normal arrow or vice versa. So because it's only a very small adjustment, we're actually going to pull inwards on the anti-normal arrow until we get to zero. There we are at zero. You can faff around to try and get it at 90 degrees, but it's not really worth it. As long as you're at zero degrees relative inclination, then you should be fine. And because we reduced the thrust on the um, engine, it's saying it would be a two second burn. Whereas if we had full thrust, it would probably say zero seconds and it would be very difficult to get accurate. So we're going to leave the thrust as is on that engine. We're going to point at the maneuver as usual. And then once it's there, we will hit the warp to maneuver button and perform the burn. So even though it says two seconds, I'm still only going to go for partial throttle on this one. And I'm also going to delete the maneuver node just after we start the burn as well. And the reason for that is it gives us the actual relative inclination that we're at. So we get a better idea of how the maneuver is doing. So as you can see, that it was very easy. We're now at zero relative degrees, which means we're in exactly the same orbital plane as the moon. So now is a good time to quick save. So for quick save, you press F5 on your keyboard. And then to actually get to the moon, what we want to do is we want to try and get our apoapsis initially to meet up with the moon's orbital line just ahead of its current position. So I'm going to create a maneuver there. Then we're going to pull the prograde arrow out and We'll actually also look down on Kerbin so we get a better idea of how the maneuver is going. And once our the orange line, our projected orbit, has met up with the moon's orbit, we will actually get those markers. So these markers actually refer to our closest point of approach. And of course, you've got one A and one B, and then two B and two A. Um, they're not hugely important at the moment. They will become much more important when it comes to doing things like rendezvous and docking with another ship. So we'll get into more detail about them in another video. But for now, all we need to do to get into orbit around the moon is we'll zoom back in on Kerbin a little bit and then we will drag the maneuver node around the moon's orbit and eventually we will get a capture with the moon. Now you can keep going. You can go as far as you want to. So you can even, uh, once it stops, do a little bit more of a burn. And then that would take you into what's called a free return trajectory. 
So I'm actually going to do that in this video. Uh, it does take a little bit more fuel, but as you could see, it won't take that much more than if we were to just go for a standard orbit going in an anti-clockwise direction. Um, now, with this mission, we obviously need to be above 60,000 meters, so we're going to aim for 68,000. I usually aim for between 65 and 70,000 meters above the moon's surface, so that will do us just fine. And then, as usual, we need to point our rocket at the maneuver marker on the nav ball. And because we've got so little delta V left in this stage, we don't really need to worry about um, increasing the thrust. But if you do have a lot of delta V, then this is the point that I would recommend putting your thrust back up to 100% and making sure that it's uh, the maneuver is all set so like I say we'll just touch one of the parts of the maneuver and for some reason that messed it up a little bit so we will just mess around with it and make sure that everything is as it should be like I say we'll aim for about 65,000 meters which will do the trick and now all we need to do is warp to the maneuver and perform the burn And as I say, it's always a good idea to do a quick save before you even warp towards the maneuver because if you make a mistake, then um, getting well only, having only 30 seconds left can be a bit of a stretch. But um, F5 is definitely your friend in this game because it's a right pain if you make a mistake and then you realise you have to start the entire mission again. But anyway, now we are going coming down to zero seconds on the burn timer. We will go to the full throttle and perform this burn as usual. So we've staged onto the next stage and what I usually like to do is I like to look down upon Kerbin as well and that will give us a better idea of how the blue orbit line is doing in relation to the projected orbit line. Uh, now once those two start to get close to each other What I usually do is I would reduce the throttle to give us a little bit more control because it's very easy to overshoot and Then having to use more fuel to get back to where you actually want to be So once again once the apoapsis gets to around here We're going to start reducing the throttle and then we can fine-tune the burn to make sure that we actually get to the moon as we desire Like I say, we'll start reducing the throttle now, so it doesn't run away with us. And we want to try and match our blue line up with the orange projected orbit line. There you go. And we, we might have gone a little bit far there, but we will delete the manoeuvre and see how we're doing. So we're actually at 67, which is plenty fine enough, like I say. If, if you're above 60,000 meters, particularly on this mission, um, then you will definitely pass the mission. So we could, if we went further down, well, we could actually warp straight into the moon sphere, but we can actually also get some more science while we are on our way there. So what we'll do is we will warp to a point midway between our ship and the entering SOI um, marker. And then once we are there, we are going to do another experiment to get some science for Kerbin High Orbit. And as you can see, we now have quite a lot of science. Then we will warp just inside of the moon's sphere of influence. So as I say, we've got the entering SOI marker or the encountering moon marker and the leaving moon marker there. And that basically means we're entering the moon's SOI and then we're leaving it. So we'll click just inside of the entering moon orbit marker and time warp to point. And now we are here, we can do another bit of science and get some more science for being in the moon high orbit. So as you can see, we now have some more science for being in high orbit around the moon. So the next thing we want to do is we want to actually capture the moon, which means we need to double click on the moon, we'll zoom in, 
And just as when creating any orbital maneuver, we will create our maneuver on the periapsis, or well, yeah, in the periapsis in this case. And because we are coming in from the right this time, we want to make sure that the maneuver node is ever so slightly to the right. But like I say, it's a little, it's better for it to be a little bit before the uh, periapsis as opposed to after. So we'll pop it there, and then we will pull outwards on the retrograde arrow until our orbit reaches inside of the moon's sphere. Now we could actually leave it at that if we wanted, however what I'm going to do to get more science is I'm actually going to reduce our orbit to below 60,000 meters, or at least our periapsis to below 60,000 meters, because that way we will actually be able to get some science for being in low orbit around the moon as well. So as you can see we are now well below 60,000 meters, we would be going for around about 55. And how this mission works is the second you actually capture the moon, as long as your periapsis, initial periapsis, is above 60,000 meters, you will actually get the, uh, the moon mission completed. So now that that is set up, we can, as usual, point at the maneuver. Once again, before we even warp, we will press F5 to quick save and then we'll hit the warp to maneuver button and perform the burn. So there you can see we have now completed that mission, um, but like I say, we're going to keep burning until we have finished this manoeuvre and we will then be able to get more science from the low moon orbit. So what we'll do now is we'll actually delete that manoeuvre, uh, we've still got 30, 63 kilometres in our periapsis, so we'll just increase the throttle ever so slightly until we go below 60,000, and there we go, that will give us a nice low orbit flyby. So to get to low orbit we'll just click on the orbit near the periapsis, we'll time warp to point, and you know you've actually entered into low orbit because the warp slows down. And now we're here we can once again do a little bit more science, and it might even be worth just seeing if EVAing will do anything. So we'll EVA, it doesn't look like it's going to make any difference. Um, and we've already done a crew observation so it won't really change anything so we'll board back onto our ship and that's pretty much all we need to do to get everything we uh, want from the moon at this moment so the only other thing we obviously need to do is we need to get our Kerbal back to Kerbin so for that we are going to click on the orbit about 90 degrees right of the moon um, Essentially, the moon is travelling in this direction, and we want to be burning retrograde from where the moon is to be able to get back to, uh, or from the moon's travel to be able to get back to Kerbin. So we'll go from about 90 degrees inside of the moon's orbit. We will create a manoeuvre plan, and then we will... Actually, I've done that wrong. It's the other way around, isn't it? Sorry. We would go on that side if we were travelling in that direction but we're actually traveling in this direction aren't we so we'll go for that we will burn our thing here until we get outside of the atmosphere and then once we are have done that we can move our orbit around and like i say we want to be leaving the moon's sphere of influence somewhere around where it's prograde arrow is retrograde arrow sorry so we'll keep playing around with the arrows and the manoeuvre until we achieve what we want, which is obviously getting back into Kerbin's atmosphere. There 
we go. So for this one, we actually want to be going quite a fair way into the atmosphere because I've tried it a few times going in at 45,000 meters, which is what I said I'd normally like to do. However, I presume that the fact that this ship is very light means that you do actually end up skipping straight back out. So what we're going to do is we're going to aim for 25,000 meters on this return journey. And now that that's set up, we will press F5 to quick save as usual. And then we will point our ship at the manoeuvre. And once the nav ball has stabilised, we can then warp to the manoeuvre. And obviously once there, we'll go to full throttle once the timer reaches zero and perform the burn. So once the blue lines start to get close together, we'll reduce the throttle, and once they've matched up, we will then be able to finish the manoeuvre. So that may, will make our actual periapsis at 26. We can faff around a tiny little bit to get it down a little bit further. As I said in the last video, you don't want to be hitting the atmosphere too steep, because there is a risk that you could um, end up burning up on re-entry. Uh, whereas that will do us nicely. So now that that's all set, I believe the only thing left to do is to double click on the on Kerbin to get close to it. And then we will warp to a point just before we enter the atmosphere. So we'll time warp to point. And once there, we'll go back on to the flight view. We will warp to about 150 kilometers above the surface and now of course we need to jettison the engine and the tank so as we always do we will go either normal or anti-normal so that we can kick the tank away from our trajectory and it's always good to do this nice and early so the tank can get a nice bit of distance because if you do it just before you start to uh, re-enter then there is a chance that it could swing back in and kill your Kerbal which obviously we don't want so now that that is done we will point our ship retrograde and it's just a matter of re-entering the atmosphere So once the aerodynamic effects have gone, we can then stage the drogue parachutes to start slowing us down. And I didn't mention in the last video, um, but in this video, when we're doing the moon in particular, we do need drogue parachutes because we are coming in at quite a hell of a lick. And uh, there's a good chance that the main parachute would break if we were only using that. So we try and use drogue parachutes as much as we can. We'll also turn off the SAS so we are saving battery, although because we have solar panels that doesn't really make much of a difference but it's a good habit to get into and then of course the only thing we need to do now is wait until we hit 1000 meters above the surface we will then deploy our main chute and cut the drogues using the action group we created during the build and then it's just a matter of splashing down completing that mission and then uh, getting the science so once again, we need to be at one speed to activate the main parachute. Once that's opened, we can once again fast forward until we splash down. And there we are, that's another mission done. So we did get all of the missions um, in Mission Control done there. We'd had the main one and the uh, two or three, I think it was three secondary missions, didn't we? So we don't need to do any more science now because we've already collected a surface sample. So all that 
we need to do now is go to the start menu and recover the vessel. And then, of course, once we are back in the Kerbal Space Center, we'll go back to Mission Control. And then all we need to do is collect all the rest of the science and we will have a hefty chunk for the next mission. And there we are, we now have 911 science, which is plenty to get us all we need to do to be able to do our one small step mission. Which, as you can see, that means we need to land on the surface. The other two we have now is we have first dibs, which is planting a flag, which obviously we will do when we land on the surface of the moon. And a perfect circle, which requires us to establish an orbit around Kerbin between 99 and 101. So basically a 100 kilometer orbit. So we should actually also be able to do that in the next one, providing we have enough fuel to be able to do that and then get to the moon. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, like I say, in the next video, we will actually be going to the moon and landing on it. And uh, yeah, hopefully I will see you in the next one.